six, five, four, three, two, one. Good morning from Miami Beach. It's Dr. John Bennett. <clears throat> Putting together uh, the Neurosurgical Super Sunday on October 21st, 19, uh, 2018. We have the pleasure of having Bernard Felix uh, presenting on the cavernous sinus, but first let me introduce the panelists. Uh, we had some technical issues. We're starting a little late. Michael, are you still there? Michael may be muted. Uh, okay. Hello. Michael, can you please good morning. introduce yourself? Hello, good morning. This is Michael Guzman from Mexico. I'm otolaryngologist resident. Just came here to... Bienvenidos de Mexico. Uh, good yes. Morning. Saludos. Saludos. Okay. <laughs> okay, Bernard, we'll have people coming in. Sorry about the technical okay. issues, but it's all yours. So, hello, friends. Um, it's very glad to meet you all in today on a warm Sunday evening. Uh, maybe it's a morning somewhere in Mexico, but anyway. I'm going to talk to you on endoscopic endonasal approach to the cavernous sinus. In fact, we were planning to have another lecture by Professor Aipcharyan on the anatomy of cavernous sinus and the conventional external approaches like the Cavassi approach, the FOZ approach, all these things. But uh, he is stuck up in the OR, and so we'll, be, we'll proceed with the endoscopic endonasal approach to the cavernous sinus. So cavernous sinus used to be a no man's land in neurosurgery. Uh, but with the gaining expertise and instrumentation, it is no more so. And we have various conventional approaches to tackle lesions in cavernous sinus, like the Dolan's approach. But this presentation is mainly about endoscopic endonasal approach to the cavernous sinus. And you may ask me, why should we do this complicated, why should we approach this complicated area through the nasal cavity with the endoscope? The answer is that many times the tumor in the cellular region or spinoid sinus spreads to the cavernous sinus. And in these cases, anyway, we need to remove the lesion through the nose with the endoscope. And so it is very easy to follow the lesion from the spinoid sinus or the cella to the cavernous sinus rather than doing another approach later on by coming through the uh, front, or, front orbital or the cavernous approach. Also in the conventional approach to the cavernous sinus, we enter the cavernous sinus through its roof or the lateral wall. And we need to work in between the corridors from the three, four, six cranial nerves. And this will put the cranial nerves to risk of injury. An endoscopic approach, we come from the medial aspect and then proceed laterally. So the nerves are encountered only towards the end of the dissection. And so it is a bit more safer to the nerves. And this is a glimpse of the anatomy of cavernous sinus. Rotone classified the cavernous sinus spaces into the posterior superior space, andro inferior space, and the medial venous space. And of course, you know the triangles of cavernous sinus, the oculomotor triangle, the clinoidal triangle, the supratrochlear and the infratrochlear triangles. But this talk uh, is actually meant for the endoscopic endonasal anatomy. So this all this anatomy is uh, far beyond the topic or the scope of discussion today. And this is not staging for the pituitary adenoma section to the cavernous sinus. And this is a very interesting paper by Joan Fernandez Miranda from the UPMC. Uh, he divided the cavernous sinus into various compartments from the endoscopic endonasal perspective. So just to orient you, this is a spinoid sinus. We have already removed all the bone and you are seeing the carotid arteries. This is the clival recess of spinoid sinus. This is the pituitary gland, and this is the foramen lacerum. You have the horizontal petrous carotid somewhere here. This is the median nerve, which is running to the foramen lacerum. 
and this segment of carotid artery is known as paraclival carotid artery and this is a cavernous carotid artery and this is a paraclinoidal carotid artery the cavernous carotid artery can be further divided into the short vertical segment posterior genu horizontal segment and the anterior genu so coming again this is a short vertical segment you have the posterior genu here this is a horizontal segment and this is the anterior genu and you have the clinoidal carotid here so the space behind this short vertical segment is known as the posterior space we have the posterior space and the space above the horizontal segment is known as the superior space and the space anterior to the horizontal and inferior and the short vertical segment is known as the inferior space and what lies lateral to the carotid artery between the cranial nerves and the carotid is known as the lateral space this is how joan fernandez classifies the compartments of cavernous sinus so this is actually a sagittal view of the left side we are looking from medial to lateral aspect so this is the left side carotid artery we are looking from medial to lateral this is the paraclival carotid artery you are seeing the this is the dorola scanner here six cranial nerve this is a short vertical segment this is a horizontal segment anterior genu posterior genu so this is the posterior compartment of the cavernous sinus and this lies behind the short vertical segment and you have the superior compartment here this lies above the horizontal segment and in front of the short vertical segment and below the horizontal segment you have the inferior compartment and lateral to the carotid you have the lateral compartment so we have four compartments of cavernous sinus uh, as per the new class given by juan miranda and in the posterior compartment you have the six cranial nerve but this part of six cranial nerve is still in its cisternal segment that is the gulfar segment so when you come from here and encounter this region you won't be seeing the nerve directly you'll be seeing just the dura over the nerve whereas when it when the six nerve comes to the inferior compartment it's already entered the cavernous sinus you'll be seeing the six nerve bare without a covering of dura and the other important structure in the posterior compartment is the meningeo hypophyseal trunk in the superior compartment you have the oculomotor triangle and the clinoidal triangle which forms the suprolateral aspect of this compartment and the third cranial nerve runs in this compartment but it is in a cisternal segment again you don't see the now bear you will have a dural covering whereas when the third cranial now runs from superior segment to the lateral compartment the nerve is bare so the nerves are bare in the inferior compartment and in the lateral compartment this is the dissection showing the horizontal carotid artery this is the anterior genu and this is the lateral compartment the lateral compartment in cases without any pathology it's almost constrict you don't really have a space there and that is probably why rotor didn't mention a lateral compartment but where you have a pathology like a pituitary adenoma this virtual space gets expanded and this is a potential space to work and remove the tumor from endonasal approach and these spaces this compartments by uh, which are described by juan miranda can be variables in the mri scan also this is a sagittal section again the posterior genu the anterior genu so this is the posterior compartment you have the superior compartment here and this is the inferior compartment again the scan showing the same compartment superior inferior compartments so this actually is a tumor which was 
uh, going to both cavernous sinus, you can see the ICS, internal cavernous ICS has been marked with a sketch here. And this is the tumor. We have lateralized the tumor and you are seeing the carotid artery and this is the left inferior hypophysal artery. And the same thing on the right side, the right internal carotid artery is a tumor and this is the right inferior hypophysal artery. So this is a posterior compartment. And this is after tumor removal, you can see complete tumor removal. Uh, let's see the surgical video of this patient. Uh, this is a 45-year-old female with a pituitary macroadenoma. And you can see that they've, they've gone to the left cavernous sinus. This patient had three, four, six granular palsies. Complete three, four, six granular palsies. And you can see in the surgical scan that the tumor has gone to the superior compartment, posterior compartment, and inferior compartment. And this is the tumor in the spinoid sinus. So just to orient you, this is a spinoid sinus. This is a cellar dura. We already opened the dura here. This is the clival recess. So this part of this is a supracellar part of tumor. We usually start working from the inferior aspect, then go laterally and then comes superior. That's how we proceed in case of a pituitary micro macroadenoma. So we are now working in the left cavernous sinus region. That is a carotid artery, cavernous carotid artery. I am working with two suction tips. And there is some bleeding from the venous confluence just behind the short vertical segment of the carotid artery in the cavernous sinus, you have the venous confluence, which is otherwise called the venous gulf. You have the superior sagittal, you have the basilar uh, venous plexus, cavernous sinus, and the petrosal sinus, all confluencing there. And there is some bleeding from there. You could control that with some flow seal or surge flow. And that's a closer view. This is a short vertical segment. This is a horizontal segment. And now we are working in the superior compartment of cavernous sinus. So carotid artery here, horizontal segment. This is a superior compartment of cavernous sinus. You won't be seeing the third nerve bare there, but you could see the third nerve underneath the dura. That probably is the interclinoid ligament, and you are seeing the third nerve there. That's the third nerve seen underneath the dura. So superior compartment, posterior compartment has been completely cleared. That is the oculomotor triangle there, dura of oculomotor triangle. This is the inferior compartment. And after uh, removing the tumor from the cavernous sinus, we go to other cavernous sinus, and that's a supracellar part also is removed. You can see the diaphragm herniating down. And that's the end of surgery. No CSF leak. Just put a, a nasoceptal flap, flap back to the cellular cavity. And the three, four, six granular palsies completely recovered on the post of day one. Uh, this is another case which I did with Professor Aip Charen in Nepal, when I used to go there, and this is actually the spinoid sinus. This actually is a sort of what you call a small spinoid sinus, not well nematized. This is a cellar dura. Lival recess. There is a superior intracavernous sinus up there. Now we are incising the dura. This actually is like a pituitary adenoma going, is 
fibrous pituitary adenoma. You can call it as a solitary fibrous tumor. It's going into the cavernous sinus on both sides. But the trouble with this tumor is it's very fibrous. We are not able to remove the suction tips. It was not coming out with cure it. So we had to go extra capsular around the tumor. So that's a tumor being removed. So as you can see that we are taking some biopsy and then we tried uh, various instruments to get it off, but it is very fibrous. So we are trying curates, we are trying various instruments, but the tumor is not coming out. And that's uh, the extra capsular dissection. We are going around the tumor capsule. You're already seeing the diaphragm there. And the tumor is now being delivered. And that's a superior intercavernous sinus region. Uh, Look, it looks like we have a little freeze here on the part of uh, Bernard. Just hang in there. <coughs> Usually, Wi Fi connections will have this little blip. <coughs> yeah, I'll just text to him. You guys see the freeze, right? <coughs> I'm gonna unmute. I'm gonna unmute everybody. This screen is frozen for you guys, right? Rakesh, Whale, Michael, and Ibrahim. Yeah, yeah, it's freezing. Yes, it's freezing. And it's not just me, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, it's freezing. Yeah, I don't know if he realizes it, but sometimes you have to read. How are you doing, Sandeep? Uh, hi, sir. I'm doing fine. Where, where are you from? You're from India? I'm I'm from India, Hyderabad, sir. Okay, welcome. Uh, Hyderabad of Telangana State. Oh, very good. Uh, we may televise a neurotrauma conference from New Delhi. Uh, next week. Okay sir. okay, sir. Yeah, from the Ames Hospital, the big Ames Hospital in New Delhi. Oh, I, I know of it, sir. Yeah, uh, Dr. Uh, Deepak Gupta is running out. The head of the chief of the of neurosurgery at uh, Ames. Okay, sir. Do you know him, C Deepak? Well, I, will, I, will, I, I will make time, sir, to join that meeting also. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a big neurotrauma conference. Whale, are you there? Yeah. Hello. Hey, how you doing? Welcome. Welcome. Uh, thank you. Where are you from, Whale? 
I'm from Sudan. Sudan. Yeah, yeah. I'm from oh, Sudan. excellent, excellent. Welcome, Mogi. Mogi is going to start the Sudan Grand Rounds uh, Tuesday. Oh, very nice. Very you know nice. Mogi, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's <laughs> what everybody Mogi. calls him, Mogi. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Mugi. You guys call him that too, right? Yeah, Mujahid. Ibrahim, are you there? Yes, yes. Hello, Dr. Bennett. Hello? Okay, I guess we can't hear him. Okay, we're waiting for Bernard to come back. But today is rife full of technical difficulties. But that's what light neurosurgery is. It's, you never know what's going to happen. Yeah, but he did a great deal of the situation uh, as it is. Uh, okay. Okay, we're not trying to get back in. Okay, here we go. Hello, welcome, Ruslan. Hello. Okay. Bernard. Okay, Bernard, onward. Let me let me unmute you. Uh, no, do do you have any? Do the panelists have any questions so far? Did you did you understand the uh, Did you understand the classification of the cavernous sinus, the endoscopic uh, compartments? Is there any doubt on that? Sir, uh, hi, sir. We know, sir. Yeah. Uh, sir, uh, how many dissections did you get to do uh, before uh, doing a live session, sir? Cadaver dissections? Cadaver dissections, um, maybe near to 50. Okay, sir. Uh, so, in order to be able to label the structures, uh, did you uh, inject any dyes for carotid or uh, uh, no, uh, no, veins, sir? It's not required. You can really clearly make up the make out the carotid. You don't really need to get an injected specimen at all. Getting okay. an injected specimen in my country is not so easy. Okay, sir. So I think I'll get back to the presentation. Sir. Okay, sir. So uh, we remove the tumor by going with the extra capsular technique, and you could see that after the tumor has been dissected off. This is the right cavernous sinus, and you're seeing the third cranial nerve and the sixth cranial nerve there. Hope that is very clear. So this is another interesting case. This actually is a case of meningioma. This is a meningioma within the Peter sir, we, we were not able to follow you, sir. Uh, the audio got lost. Can you repeat the statement? No. This is actually, I think some of uh, some of your, your audio is on. I think Sandeep, or maybe somebody has to mute your audio. Sir, are you still there? A lot of background noise. <laughs> John? Okay. So this actually is a meningioma in the petrous apex. We had a meningioma here. The neurosurgeons did a half and half approach, which is a neurosurgical approach. They removed the tumor from here. But the patient, the patient still has a residual tumor in the cavernous sinus. So this is a residual meningioma in the cavernous sinus. And the patient already had three, four, six cranial palsies. You can see the tumor in the cavernous sinus. So this is a surgical clip. This is a right nasal cavity. We are taking the hadat flap from the right nasal cavity. That's the hadat flap being elevated. And the hadat flap is a vascularized pedicle flap of nasal septal based on the spinopalin artery. Now the flap is parked in the coena. Now we are removing the septum. And we removed the part of left middle turbinate also. And now we are removing the part of left maxillary sinus. We are removing the anterior wall and the middle wall of left maxillary sinus by doing the Denker's approach. This is the posterior wall of maxillary sinus. And 
Hey, somebody is, is playing some music there. Can you please mute that? Again, a lot of background noise. So this is a spinopal artery. This is a spinopal artery there. We are going to cauterize the spinopal artery. And that's the posterior of maxillary sinus being removed. And now you are seeing the pterygopalatine fossa there. That's the pterygopalatine fossa. Now we are gently lateralizing the pterygopalatine fossa. And this is a greater palatine canal, the descending palatine artery here. That's a median nerve, median nerve here, and that's a foram rotundum up. That's the keel of spinoid sinus being removed. So, to orient you, this is the spinoid sinus, the vidian nerve, the foramen rotundum here. We are going to drill around this vidian nerve to identify the foramen serum. That is the palatovaginal canal. This is the video now. Now we are going to drill around the video now. And that's the tumor in the spinoid sinus. It already covers the anterior aspect of the foramen serum. And as I told you, that's uh, drilling around the Vidian canal. That's a meningioma. It already came to the spinot sinus. It's a very fibrous meningioma. It's not coming up with suctions. And so we are forced to use a micro debrader to remove the fibrous tumor here. At times, there is no other way other than using a micro debrader, but it's a very unsafe instrument. You have to be very careful. I must know exactly the anatomy, otherwise you can really cause uh, really dangerous complications. This is the right clival carotid artery. You have the left carotid somewhere here, the right carotid. Clival recess, left will be somewhere here. And there is some tumor which covers the foramen serum there. That is a maxillary now. Now we are drilling over the cavernous sinus. That is a drilling over the cavernous sinus region now. Make the bone paper thin and then remove it. So the entire cavernous sinus, and we are drilling over the cavernous sinus and anterior to the cavernous carotid. We are using the Doppler probe to identify the carotid artery. Doppler is a very essential instrument in, the, in these sort of surgeries. That is for amyl serum. So entire left cavernous sinus has been made paper thin. The bone has been made paper thin and now we are going to open the cavernous sinus. Pura. So we map the carotid with the Doppler probe and we are opening the cavernous sinus pura now.
some more extension of the dural opening and that's tumor room we try it remove the tumor with curates suction but it was not coming up with suction and some kerosene punches with all these instruments we are removing the tumor from the cavernous sinus this is the cavernous carotid artery so this is the cavernous carotid artery we are removing the tumor from here you will have the cranial nerve somewhere here but all these cranial nerves are really infiltrated with the tumor so we are not able to identify the cranial nerves and we are not getting a planer on the tumor also so carotid artery and tumor is being removed from the cavernous sinus now and now we are getting a cs of leak somewhere from inside so we really had some reasonable tumor removal from there now we can see the carotid artery very clearly and that's a tumor cavity and we place a we place a hadar flap back and reconstruct the repair uh the recovery for this patient really didn't start immediately it started 3 months down the line so after 3 months the patient started gradually recovering but even now it's about 4 4 months now the patient is not completely recovered it's but she is gradually recovering from the cranial paralysis so for doing all this challenging surgeries you need a complete set of instruments and the setup you need the gadgets like flow seal or surgery flow to control the bleeding you need navigation at times you need the doppler probe and this is very important see what do you need to venture into this cavernous sinus you need adequate expertise adequate instruments and gadgets and anatomy is very important knowledge of anatomy you must spend many many hours doing dissection the cadaver lab and attending courses and don't forget that we stand on the shoulder of giants like roton kasam giorgio frank gardner snerman karo kapabianka shore etc etc without whose contributions cavernous sinus would have remained a no man's land for the endoscopic surgeons so thank you okay okay uh, banad excellent a uh, great great videos and uh, good yeah. good resolution uh Sorry about the delays etc and the technical problems but let me first <laughs> let me first introduce a couple of panelists that came Dr. Kabulo good day Okay can you hear me Dr. Kabulo and uh, Yes Dr. 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 Bennett how are you Oh good to have you back right. how you been Thank you yes but I just joined uh, at the end Okay I good. didn't know about the time Okay, you, 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 could you please introduce yourself for the other for Vernon and the other panelists, please? It's okay. My name is Dr. Kabulo. I'm originally from Democratic Republic of Congo in Central Africa. Currently, I'm a neurosurgery resident at the University of Zimbabwe. Yeah, welcome, Dr. Kabulo. And uh, is Ibrahim? Are you there? Ibrahim Salamov from Russia. Can you hear me okay? Yes, well, can you hear me? Uh, can you, go can ahead, you hear me? Go ahead. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. Hello? Yes. Uh, okay, uh, hello. My name, my name is Ibrahim. I'm from Russia. Uh, I am a resident uh, first uh, in the uh, Federal Center of Neurosurgery in Taiwan. Uh, and uh, this, uh, this call, this uh, <laughs> amazing lecture. Thank you, Dr. Okay, I'm having a hard time hearing here. Uh, Ruslan, are you there? Ruslan, uh, Dr. Koff, could you please introduce Dr. Banad, please? Uh, I'm a student from Russia, second course. I want to <laughs> the uh, neurosurgery. I'm bad English, <laughs> I'm sorry. That's okay, that's okay, we can understand. And thank you for coming. And Gorab, can you hear me okay? 
Yes, sir, I'm hearing you. Welcome back. Uh, thank you, sir. And uh, it's been so long that I've not been present here. Anyways, I'm happy to be again here. Um, so to introduce myself, I'm Dr. Gora, but I'm from Nepal, and uh, I'm just an internship uh, uh, student, and I'm interested in neurosurgery. Uh, um, and nice to meet you, Dr. Gora. <laughs> it's an honor to be here, Alec. Nice meeting you, Gaurav. Okay, very good. How about you, Well, Can you please say hi to Vinod? Well, uh, Alabas, I, I believe you met him before, correct, Vinod? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hello? Oh, okay. Okay, any uh, comments or questions, uh, Whale or uh, Ibrahim or Garab for Dr. V Dr. Felix? Yeah, I have a question. Hello there. Yeah, we can hear you. I have a question uh, regarding the use of uh, the endoscopic approach with the use of uh, anatomical spaces you you mentioned. How we are going to use uh, this anatomical spaces to choose our endoscopic approach? Uh, Dr. Alabas, I didn't really get you. Can you come again? Can you, Can you come one? again? This? Regarding the spaces. Regarding the staging, okay, okay. Regarding the anatomy of the spaces. I understand. Um, I think I would come back again to the presentation. What, what, uh, how are you doing? No, I, I will come uh, back. To the, uh, my question okay. is regarding uh, what? Regarding? Go ahead, well, go ahead. Regarding the anatomical spaces, how we are going to, to choose the endoscopic approach? How to design okay. the, the approach regarding the space? The entire cavernous sinus is accessible uh, with the endoscope. But if you have a lesion in the lateral compartment of the cavernous sinus, uh, for example, if you have a meningioma or an angiomatous lesion there, you really have to ask yourself to tell us whether I am, am I really experienced enough to tackle this lesion with the endoscope. If you are comfortable, you can go uh, tackle this area with the endoscope. As I showed you with the meningioma patient, if not, you should go with this uh, conventional cavasia approach or some other neurosurgical approach to tackle this region. Okay, did that answer that okay? Uh, but my question is regarding the space. Uh, uh, designing the uh, the approach, however, if it is more in the superior space, in the inferior space, or in the uh, posterior okay, space, okay. how this is okay. I understand. Okay. See, uh, the tumor is primarily in the if the tumor is in the superior compartment or in the posterior compartment, we just need to go through the cellar cavity as in the conventional endoscopic plant cellar approach and remove the tumor. Whereas if you have it, but, but what you do in, in addition to that is that you need to uh, remove the dura, remove, you have to visualize the entire cavernous sinus so that uh, you have enough space to, I'll come back to the picture again. See, if you have a tube superior compartment, we need to drill all this bone over this carotid artery. And now we can really put the suction tip here and retract the carotid slightly laterally. We can slightly mobilize the carotid. And by doing that, the entire superior compartment and the inferior compartment comes into the surgical field. And that's how we have approached the lesion, the superior compartment and in the, and in the posterior compartment. Whereas if you have a lesion in the inferior compartment, we need to drill the bone over the cavernous carotid and remove the dura which overlies this inferior compartment. That is slightly somewhat bit more challenging. You may need to do the, what do you call a trans approach to get a better exposure. So it's always, it's anyway going to be a binostral four-handed technique and you may, need, in addition, need a trans approach if you if you 
if you need to attack the leash in the lateral cavernous sinus or in the inferior or in the inferior cavernous sinus whereas for superior and posterior it's a conventional transcellar approach you just need to retract the carotid slightly to tackle the lesions there is that what you ask yeah yeah very, very nice very nice thank you thank you yeah, thanks for that uh, Dr. Google, any have comments or questions question. for uh, Dr. Felix? Yes. Uh, can you hear me? Hello. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I can hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I have a question about uh, uh, about uh, flap uh, after operation. Uh, did you uh, did you flap uh, was vascularization flap or uh, free flap or maybe gasket seal? No. Uh, what kind? What kind of flap you uh, use? 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 Using? Use? Uh, generally, I just use a vascularized flap called a Haddad flap, and if there is a CSF leak, I just place some fat and fat, and above that I place a Haddad flap. If there is no CSF leak, I just place a free mucosal graft or a Haddad. That's my general reconstruction. Okay, thank you, thank you. And uh, uh, second question about neural navigation. Uh, uh, do you use uh, neural navigation uh, d during during your operation? Uh, neural navigation is um, not really used in all cases. And we are, at times we are forced, uh, we, need, we get the neural navigation uh, from another center. It's actually airlifted for important cases. So at times we are forced to do the case without a neural navigation. But anyway, you can really manage with the Doppler probe. If you have the Doppler probe, you can really know where the carotid artery is. And that's more important. And if you have the Doppler probe and the, what do you call the neural nerve monitoring, you can really work even without a neural navigation. But our neural navigation is a very essential tool. It, it has its villain good. Uh, okay. okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Okay, uh, Dr. Kabulo, do you, are you there? Yes, I'm there, Dr. Bennett, I'm there. Okay, do you have any comments or questions for uh, Dr. Felix? No, thank you. Sorry, I just joined uh, almost at the end of the presentation, but I enjoyed the, the part I I watched. Yeah. Okay, good. I think, uh, John, we should have this session again, probably in, in the coming week with uh, Professor Ayipchiri and handling the anatomy and the external approach, and I will come again with the endoscopic approach. That I will be like a complete degree uh, view of the anatomy. Can we have it's it okay. again sometime later, John? What's that? Can we have this session again in, in sometime later with Prof. Raipchari and discussing the anatomy and the external approach? And I will speak about endoscopic approach so that the audience will completely get a 360 degree anatomy of the cavernous sinus. Can we have it a repeat session probably a couple of weeks later with Prof. Raipchari? Yeah. Okay, I guess that's that's one area which is in common with neurosurgeons and ENT surgeons, correct? The cavernous cavernous sinus. Yeah. All right. Okay. And do you find you, uh, yourself doing more procedures in that area with the endoscope, uh, Bernard? You're yeah, right. I do more procedures with the endoscope, and uh, we have a really very good team with the neurosurgical uh, department. Uh, we have a very good neurosurgeon, Dr. Ajit, here, and of course, when I go to Nepal, we have Prof. Aibchari, and and so I have a very good uh, team of neurosurgical colleagues with me, and and with, without their help, we wouldn't be doing all this work because uh, as the ENT surgeons they know the endoscopic anatomy of the nose and sinuses very well, and they know really to play with the endoscopes and the instruments inside the nasal cavity. But once you go beyond the dura, it is a neurosurgical field. Yeah. And without the help of neurosurgeons, it's very difficult to work in that area. Maybe because I am working for the past 10 years with the neurosurgeons, I know, know some anatomy, but still I prefer to have a team with the neurosurgeons. Okay. So, uh, yeah, it seems that uh, endoscopy is a very hot topic. A lot, of, a lot of neurosurgeons want to know about it. A lot of ENT people, I'm sure, they want to know about it. 
Did you do did you do much in your residency, or did you mostly expose when you were started to practice? Uh, I didn't get it, John. Uh, your endoscopy experience. Did you start as a resident getting experience with the endoscope? I know, yeah, yeah. I started as a resident. Okay. Uh, I had some good teachers who were, were very good with endoscopic technique. So I was doing these techniques uh, at my residency itself. Okay. Well, I, I, I noticed you mentioned Dr. Schroeder uh, as one of the giants. Yeah, that's a, uh, I know, yeah, yeah. That's a neurosurgeon from uh, Germany, correct? I know, yeah, yeah. I know, I know Professor Schroeder, yeah. Yeah, he's big in endoscopy, Dr. Schroeder from Germany. Uh, Vinod, Dr. Sch yeah. he he's from Germany, correct? I know, I, I know Professor Schroeder, yeah. I know him. I know him very well. Yeah, he's, he's one of the persons, uh, uh, we actually, uh, many of us in India learned the technique from people like Professor Kassam, uh, Gardner, Schroeder, and all these giants. They, we, these people come to the come for conferences, we just watch them, we, and then we refine our techniques. Yeah, we, we televised him from Russia and Taiwan, matter of fact, where Abraham is doing his residency. He's here now, and there's a couple other Russians here with us too. Uh, maybe they're they're from Taiwan also, but he goes to to uh, Taiwan every year. Have you been to Taiwan, uh, Benad? Yeah, I was there. Yeah, I went there. Oh, okay. Um, okay yeah, I am actually I was there. I am actually in the uh, I'm a visiting consultant to the center also. Like yeah. I along with Professor Cherry and I go there uh, every every year. Yeah, they are very good department there. I know them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, did you go during the winter in Siberia? Uh, no. <laughs> Next time. Yeah, but of course we when I went there, it is not in the winter. So, uh, but we had fun. Yeah, we went for all this what do you call the steam bath in Russia. They have a particular steam bath where we go in the go to the very hot. Uh, they put hot water over you first and then into the jump into the ice cold water. It's really fun. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Abraham won a surgical skills contest in Taiwan. Uh, Abraham, can you hear me? We will, we will, we will nice uh, to see you, doctor. We're not uh, in uh, Taiwan. <laughs> yeah, perhaps you met Abraham. Oh, I, know, I, know, I, know, I know him. I know I, I, met, I, met, I met him there. <laughs> I know him. Very good, very good. Uh, okay, uh, any more, more comments or questions from the panelists? And we surely welcome Dr. Kabulo and Dr. Alabas here, as well as the Russians. We have three Russians with us today. Uh, that's fantastic. And uh, Bernard, I'm going to China to be with uh, Yuha. Yuha, yeah, I know. He invited me also. Yeah. But I think uh, I, I, I I won't be coming this year, but next year I'll be definitely coming to China. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I'm looking forward to, to that because uh, he's working hard to establish uh, Hanan as a center of neurosurgery education. Um, okay. Now I, I don't know how much endoscopy uh, um, Yuha does. Does he do a lot of endoscopy? Do you know, uh, or not? Hmm? Uh, he was not doing the endoscopy, but uh, he tackles almost all the lesions with the what he calls supraglobe craniotomy. He mostly does aneurysms. Yeah, he mostly does aneurysms. I think. Correct. I think he does. Probably done the most in the, in the world. I think. And uh, well, we have a couple of things on the news. We might, Renard, we might start the. Um, Hope we sell us in rounds. Uh, Dr. Kabulo, I t chatted with uh, Dr. Kazadi, and he may want to start a grand round. Yeah, my in Mozambique, ho hopefully. Oh, yeah, Professor Kazadi, I, I know, yeah. Yeah, okay, very good. Yes, Professor Kazadi, my professor, yes. Okay, okay. okay. Can we, can we, regards? I know you to the WFNS group. Yeah, oh, it's uh, okay. we're trying Thank to you so much. in Africa we're using this technology, uh, the African the neurosurgical community. It's really is an interest. Uh, we, we have two yeah. things for the end grand round, Dr. Dubulo. I hopefully, hopefully Mo, Mogi said he wants to do a grand round on Sunday, on Tuesday. Uh, and you're all certainly welcome to come. Abraham, Rasim, 
wrestling and grab. So, bring in this formal part of it, and then we'll just turn it on chat. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Bernard, for an excellent presentation. I'm thank you. Stop, I'm going to stop recording, and you can just hang out here. Thank you. Bye-bye.